Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode here on the Hermitcraft Mesafide server and for today's episode we have a plan. We are going to be going into the nether, hunting some ghast because I need to get myself some ghast tears so that we can craft the end crystals and respawn the ender dragon in the end. And hopefully get ourselves an elytra as well while we're there. That is the plan. Also I'm going to be building the purple shop as well, but for the beginning of this episode just wanted to have a quick chat with you. And while we do that, I do want to show you the chorus plant farm over here. I, I love this thing, I love watching it get harvested because of the way it breaks. It's really cool um, to watch all of the blocks sort of disappear as they animate. So let's activate this thing, down goes the water and look at that. It looks so cool. And I love the way that it works its way from the side inwards. Can you see how it's doing that? <laughs> That's so cool, and that's because of the way that the water um, spreads on this thing. Let's retract it and then do that again. So it'll go all the way out to the edge, and then the water source blocks will spread across the middle, and so it drops down like that. It's a really cool little animation, and this is sort of what I've been doing a lot of in between episodes, is just hanging out over here, getting some drops in our guardian farms as well, and then I wander around the edge here um, looking for any coarse fruit that's fallen over to the side and collecting them. And yeah, this is what I've been doing, just farming it all. Anyway, as I said, I did want to have a little bit of a chat, and it's just about the silverfish in the, not the last episode, the one before that where we went to the end. I got the impression from my comments that a lot of you thought that I didn't understand how silverfish work, and basically there was a point in that video where I was saying that this is clearly a bug, and what are these silverfish doing? And I think a lot of you interpreted it as me not understanding how silverfish work. I do understand how they work, I understand that they can go inside... Uh, stone blocks, they can go inside regular stone, stone bricks as well. And what I was referring to as being a bug was the quantity of them. There was a seriously large amount of silverfish, and that to me seemed like a bug. But later on we realised that it was actually Cubfan who had been in the area with an invisibility potion. So he had spawned lots and lots of silverfish, and then they got inside of lots and lots of blocks. And then because of that we had a silverfish swarm on our hands. And it was made by, worse by the fact that some of us had fawns armour, so when they attacked us they took damage in return, which encourages more silverfish to come out of the blocks. And also lots of us have like fire aspect and flame as well. So when we were attacking these silverfish we were setting them on fire and then they keep taking damage every second and that just brings more and more silverfish. Anyway, I wanted to clear that up just so you know that I'm, I'm not a complete newbie, alright? <laughs> and check this out, look how much chorus fruit we've got. An insane amount, right? I have been doing so much farming over here. We've also got loads of popped chorus fruit in this chest and a lot of it inside these furnaces as well. We are, you know, going to be opening up a shop and we're going to have a serious supply of purple blocks to sell to everyone. I do hope that they're popular though because if they're not then <laughs> we might have overstocked. And uh, yeah, there's just one more thing for me to mention at the beginning, which is I've been working on my armour. We've now got our leggings and our boots sorted out. So the boots are like they were before, all of that good stuff on there. And the leggings, I got myself a Projectile Protection 4 book, which is really great. They're really difficult to get. It's the first one that I've got. And check it out, we now got Protection Protect... Protect projectile wow that's a tongue twister <laughs> apparently projectile protection for and fawns free as well and so now we've only got fawns on this one and this one but interestingly enough they are the armor with the most durability so it's probably the best place to have the fawns enchantment on and anyway that's what I've been up to we're gonna hop over to the never now and we're gonna start hunting ourselves some ghast I can hear you now I can see you <laughs> make sure we're holding our looting sword and make sure the ghast isn't above a giant lava lake because then we can't collect its ghast tears, can we? Ah, oh, we'll have to wait for him to come over here. Okay, there we go and oh no. Oh, look at that. Oh wait, there's the gunpowder. Oh well. So I'm not far from the spawn hub, I decided that rather than to go out on the area at the height of the spawn hub, I would drop down below it and start exploring. And there is tons of uh, quartz and glowstone down here, and this is a nice big old patch to find. Oh, hello! <laughs> Hi! Uh, no. Yes! I thought that was a lava lake. Let's see. Did we get one? No, we got some more gunpowder. And we've returned to sender. I don't think we would have got the looting effect either. Okay, now we've got two of them in our sights. 
Let's hope they head towards us a little bit here. Because there is a big old lava lake again. Yeah, there he is. Hello. Uh, maybe you're not quite near the lava. It's very hard to tell. We've definitely got to lure them this way. Oh, there we go. There is some more land down there. Let's pop onto this bit. That's it. Come up over the edge. That's the way. Now we're going to shoot you. Oh, what is going on with my bow there? <laughs> that was really odd and I desperately need to eat. Okay, I just killed one and there's another one here. Oh no, I knocked the thing away. Hey, don't go anywhere. Man, they are dodging my shots today. And another one. I think we found the place where the ghasts like to spawn. This could be three in a row. Did I pick up those items? Yes, yes. Three! We got three of them. That's because of the looting effect, I bet ya. And... Six! Amazing! Let's go for one more. Can we get nine? We only need four. But I feel greedy. Come on, guy. Uh, you're possibly above a lava lake. What are you above? No, you're not. <laughs> and now you're easy pickings. Except I hit that again. There we go. Come on. And... Wow! Another three! That's amazing! Three in a row with three gas tiers each. That is the looting sword for you. And I'm going to get all of that glowstone. So that was our second recent trip to the nether, and without spending much time on either of these trips, we have got a lot of materials, a lot of resources gathered, that's brilliant, of course, for future builds. And to craft this thing, we're going to need some glass, we will need our <laughs> gas tears, and we're also going to need to make some eye of enders as well. And I can't remember from the snapshots how these things work, but I think you can place them in the overworld if you put them on bedrock or obsidian, and I was thinking about using them as base decoration at some point. We're not going to do that right now, of course, but it's something to keep in mind. Um, so Eye of Enders go in the middle, Glass Tears at the bottom, Glass around the outside, and we need four of these, and we've got four. Excellent. And I do not want to test placing this down um, in the overworld, but that's something we might do in the future, have these as decoration in our base. Anyway, let's get prepared, head over to the end, and fight this Ender Dragon. So I've got to say, I'm actually really excited for this end dragon fight now because it's kind of occurred to me that I don't think I've ever done this by myself before. Maybe back in 2011 or 2012 when I had a single player world, but otherwise this is going to be it. And we can actually go in there because it won't be, you know, there at the moment. We have to spawn it in first so we can take a look at our surroundings and think about this a little bit. I was going to pick up some boats before I uh, went through the portal. I forgot to do that, I guess. We'll steal some of these and just make sure I've got a few on my inventory. I was thinking if I get in a sticky situation, it might be a good idea to plop one of these down if an Enderman is being aggressive towards me. So a couple of those would be a good idea, I reckon. I also want to do an experiment while we're here. Glad I remembered this. We're going to take... Um, a block of obsidian from over here, and then I want to see if that's going to regenerate. In fact, I'm going to take two, just so it's a little bit clearer to see. So we've got to come back there and check that in a moment, because that means you could like take down all of the obsidian pillars, if you needed that much obsidian, and then you would come back here and regenerate it. And what's going on over here? That's interesting. Maybe that was already there. Maybe someone's dug that out themselves. Anyway, I'm not going to record the entire thing straight through. I'm probably going to edit this a lot because I am anticipating it taking a while. You know, fighting it by yourself is very different from a group. But you can see we're prepared. I've also brought some glass bottles with me. That's to get the dragon's breath. And that guy just walked in front of me. <laughs> but he didn't get aggressive. That's good. All right, then. Let's plop these down. Let's see the respawn process. No, the respawn process in process. <laughs> I don't know what I was trying to say there. There we go. Awesome stuff. Ha! And it's going to start all over again. So where was our pillar with the obsidian? It was this one over here, wasn't it? And there's the... Oh! Look at that! Was it this one? What other ones have got cobblestone wrapped around them? Nope, it was definitely this one. We came from over there. Okay, there you go. That means you could probably chop down one of these entire things and then regenerate it again. And i got to take out each of the end crystals as well. This is going to be tricky. I'm going to have to get my bow ready, and some of them we've got to climb up there. I brought ladders for that. And there she is. Right, here we go. As I said, though, we're going to edit this one, because, man, it's going to take me a while. Whoa, what's going on? What hit me? Did something attack me? Someone mad? <laughs> Why did I get knocked off of there? Oh, Dragon's Breath. Let's do it now. Quick. You can only get so many per one of these. They are all angry at me. That is a crowd of angry Endermen. Wait, what? <laughs> 
No, they're angry at the dragon and they were coming towards me. Wow, that is crazy. Yeah, you can only get so many of these before they disappear. I think we got the most. Let's go back up again. I did make sure I had a lot of ladders. Oh, and there's one above us now. Let's get some more of those potions. Well, this will be risky, but we're doing it anyway. <laughs> oh, we were absolutely fine there. Okay. And we've got all of those. What I've been doing is looking at the Ender Dragon and seeing what's healing her. You can see there's just one over there now to do, which is alright. I'm just going to leave these here. I'm not fussed. <laughs> this one will do of our hand. Dragon's breath, please. Wow, you are ridiculously loud. <laughs> Let's take some of that. Okay, while you're there, do we have to hit you from behind or from the side? No, we can hit you from the side. I think there's a point where the side doesn't work. I should chuck my uh, potion of strength. Of course, you're going to fly off now, aren't you? There we go. That's why I brought this here with me. And wow, we got hit way up into the sky there. That was something I was going to mention. Uh, but this fight doesn't feel too risky because we've got great armor and stuff, but there's no real risk of losing it because there's no like void terribly close close to where actually fighting the dragon. Um, so I'm not fearful of getting dropped out of the world. So she is somewhere up above us. I'm probably just going to wait until she comes back here. It makes it so much easier. You know, there we go. So now we've got our strength potion. Jump back in and just, yeah, do all the damage like this. That's the way. Oh, and then we get knocked back a couple of times. Wow. Wow, we are getting knocked back a fair bit there. <laughs> oh, it becomes a thing. Look, I can't get close from the side. I talked about this a second ago. It's my fawns that's doing... Oh, oh, bucket of water, bucket of water. <laughs> there we go. It's my fawns that's doing damage to her. However, we can't approach her from the side at this point, but probably from behind. This is what I remember during the snapshots. Right, and I really need to heal up. Do you know what? She's been stuck there for some time and I'm like, let's use the bow now. <laughs> and the bow seems to work and she's probably going to do a lot of damage to us right as she dies. So let's make sure we're healed up. And this is just too easy really. This is easier than it used to be, I'm sure. Because now she just sits there in the middle and makes your life nice and easy. Okay, now the Ender Dragon on Hermitcraft should drop an Elytra. Let's... I saw something drop. There it is. Excellent. Okay. So, we saw it drop down into that area. There's no portal yet. And Tango and Impulse did this. Oh, all of that XP. Let's get that XP. Wow, that's a lot of stuff right there. Excellent. And some of it would have gone through the portal as well. So, I was uh, talking to Tango and Impulse, or at least Tango. And uh, and the two of them have fought the dragon together. And they didn't get an Elytra. But I reckon, as you saw there, it dropped into where the portal will later on appear. And therefore, it sent it through to um, to a place in the spawn chunks, which is where we're going to go right now. So, so those items should have come through somewhere here in the spawn chunks. Let's jump off the edge, let's tap space bar, and what are we doing? We're flying over there, because we've got our elytra wings. Wow! And there was some of the XP as well. Oh look! That's interesting. So, I left this sign here by the way. This time they came out over on this spot, maybe they're actually there. There's somewhere here that the items come through, and I reckon that's where their elytra went and possibly despawned, but we were able to nab one first, weren't we? We saw where it landed, which was good. So excellent, we've got an elytra. Do you know what that means we're going to do now? It means we're going to go caving. We're going to spend our time underground doing nothing. <laughs> no, of course not. We're going to go climb some form of... I don't know, where's like the biggest bit? Like a, a mountain or, or like a building that's tall? We're going to get up high anyway, and then we're going to do some flying with our elytra. I've gone through the wrong portal, and now I'm thinking, can I get over there with just the elytra wings? Let's make use of this cobble, which has been here since forever, and I don't know why I haven't removed it. So jump spacebar, and we are actually gliding, and we're going to make it all the way over there very easily. Oh, look at that. Oh, this is so cool. Where's the F5 button? Can I actually press it? Wow. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. I love it. More often than not when recording Hermitcraft, I make an episode plan, I write down a list of things that I wanted to do, 
And on my list today was get the elytra, but for some reason I didn't think about what was to come after that. <laughs> and my oh my, am I going to have so much fun right now. But I have to show you something really cool, which is... Well actually, let's just jump off first, jump, press spacebar, engage, press F5, oh my god. And look at that. Can you see the numbers going up? We've got a new statistic on the tab screen. And that is the amount of centimetres that you have flown with your elytra wings. And you can see that number is... It's kind of jumping around a little bit as well, isn't it? Oh man, this is so cool. Look at Tango's building. Oh, I wish this would just load a little bit faster. That is amazing though. And you know where we're heading to? Oh, we're a little bit lower than it. I wonder if we can spot Mumbo working on his base here. Oh, exclusive preview. I'm going to look the other way. We didn't see that. You didn't see anything, all right? And wow, now we're here at the Jellyfish. False might be here as well. Let's do a quick sharp turn and uh, don't want to look at that. <laughs> and whoa, he landed in the Jellyfish. Amazing, we can fly from my area all the way over here. That is so much fun. I want to do that again straight away. And I think what we're going to have to do is probably set up some sort of station with a proper way to get all the way up to the top. Maybe after uh, Tango's Iron Farm is done because then we can use minecarts to travel up quickly. But that is so much fun. I'm going to head right back there and do that again. <laughs> oh man, the elytra, it's amazing. Where are we right now? We are under the Hermitcraft spawn chunks where the command blocks are located. These are all the contraptions that make all the cool stuff happen on the server, like the one player sleeping thing, which I just did a tutorial on. That will probably look very familiar if you saw that video. Anyway, on the tab screen we had a very large number for the elytra flight and that's because it measures things in centimetres. Now what's interesting is that statistic tells you um, that the elytra travel will be measured in centimetres. There's another one called minutes played, which doesn't measure it in minutes, it measures it in, in ticks. And what we had to do was create a little setup to convert that into hours for us. And so now I've done the same thing over here. So. Um, 100 centimetres is going from you know one side of the block to the other because a block is one metre and so that's why we had a very large number there. So now I've changed it so that it divides it by uh, 100,000 which means that now displays kilometres. So, so far on the server I have travelled 69 kilometres and it's all done with a few command blocks, these ones right here and a couple of scoreboards. Man, I can still hear the guardians from all the way up here. There it is again, that's crazy, and we're probably high enough up now. So what did I say earlier in the episode was part of the plan? Oh, we've got to go into F5. It was, of course, to work on our Purpa shop. That's right, we're going to be selling some Purpa blocks. Oh, wow, it's so easy to get around with this. I love it! A whole new view of the server right here. Oh, incredible. So many distractions will happen thanks to these Elytra wings. But yes, we're going to be working on the Purpa shop now. Let's go in for an amazing landing. Look at that, put your feet down on the ground. And we have landed just fine. I love the Elytra, man. It's so cool. So very cool, isn't it? And uh, yeah, I've got some blaze rods. I have about 35 in total. And 32 of them we're going to be using in the shop over... <gasps> Four each! <laughs> Four each! That's amazing! No, we're not going to be using 32. We're going to be using eight of them. And that is just fine. That is just fine by me. So I brought over a few more supplies. But now we're going to start work on the Purpa shop and I think you guys are really going to like the design I've come up with here. Tried to challenge myself a lot and we're going to do something that's sort of inspired by let's say a modern build but it's going to look a bit out there and spacey as well and our two colours are basically going to be Purpa blocks with purple, the end stone bricks with yellow and then there'll be a few of these end rods thrown in which by the way are pretty cool. I love those particle effects as well. That's awesome. So there is one other material here that is a factor, and that is the quartz. And as nice as it looks with the yellow and purple, it looks awful against this hardened clay. So I've got to find a way later on to transition this, but the building itself is going to look pretty cool. And we've sort of got the basic of the frame in right here. What we want to do now, though, is actually pop up here and bring this back in a little bit. Now, I think I already said... Oh, I've managed to fall down in there, have I? <laughs> um, but the style we're sort of going for here is a little bit modern, a little bit spacey, and you'll see what I talk about, because I think the um, like the entrance or, well, the front of this shop will show you exactly what I'm talking about. So that's the shape that we want right there. By the way, where the quartz is, that's an entrance on one side, that's an entrance on the other side over there. And then we're going to have our shop windows, and these are going to look really cool because we're going to use some end rods with them. So we go up like that, bring it across. Unfortunately, that chest will have to be removed. Put it in the wrong spot. 
and I was thinking there for a second I need to grab some more materials from it, but luckily we've got the um, end stone right here. And then the way we're going to do the windows is by having the end rods at the bottom and top like that. They almost look like a, like a jail cell, you know, like the bars on the window, but they're very nice and sparkly. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, and now we're going to sort of build up the rest of the shop like around this, and this is going to be like the front where you've got the entrance on either side, and in here is going to just be the the main shop area. In fact, we're going to have like a little stand here for each of the purple blocks. So there'll be four little pedestals like that, and then we'll have like a slab and stairs and the pillar block as well. But yeah, after this point though, it probably looks reasonable at the moment. After this point, it's going to start to get a little bit abstract as it gets bigger and bigger. So it's coming together and uh, it looks a little bit odd when it's not fully finished. We've got another couple of windows around on this side and what I need to do is actually put some blocks just up the top here to fill in those gaps. Kind of looks like they're filled in already, but that's because there's more of these stone bricks or end stone bricks even up the top there. So that looks a little bit better and I like the top of this as well, the way we've got just the um, the sort of lines and curves just going around one another. They're not really curves, you know what I mean. And a couple of end rods up the top. And we're going to do the same thing over here actually as well. And while I've been building this, I've been jumping up and down a lot and I've noticed that the elytra sometimes sort of bugs out while you jump up and down and sort of breaks your, uh, your jump which can be a little bit annoying. So over on this side we're going to have two end rods just like on the other side over there but we're not going to mirror what we did in that spot what we're actually going to do is build a big window because we're going to do some other types of window as well and do you know what I thought I'd gotten to bring along with me it is some magenta stained glass so we're going to have some big windows on this building as well um, so when we put like the magenta stained glass in there it's going to look seriously good and this thing is just going to have like another dimension to it but already it's getting a little bit bigger um, also on the inside here, this is like the entirety of the shop. The walls will be built up around it, there'll be a roof as well. I do believe there's a little bit of quartz on the roof in this area, the way I designed it, and I've got to craft some more slabs by the look of it. But basically you've got your two entrance ways, you've got the blocks that are for sale, or at least that you can make with the purple, because we're just going to sell this type. And over here is going to be the counter, so behind there somewhere there'll be a sign with a price, which is going to be four stacks of purple for a diamond, and then there'll simply just be four chests in a row right here. So you can't, well actually I think when the roof's there you can't jump over onto the other side, but then there's just going to be chests that you can access through this gap, and then that's the way it's going to work. Let's get this thing built up a little bit more. And then one of the next things we're going to be doing is putting a big old sign up the top there to let everyone know what we're selling. Okay, this is the roof sort of done up to a point, a height even, with the exception of that. And there's not going to be anything up here. I was actually thinking of building some sort of access route for myself, but there's really nothing that we need to put up here at all. And uh, a zombie villager walked into this area, had a white lab coat, and he was perfect for selling purple blocks. So I want to have one of those just back here. Now that I think about it, can they jump off of the chests and over the slabs? They probably can, which means we'd need like something else here to keep them down in place. I can also hear some groaning outside. Hi, we've got a regular zombie. If I see another one, I'm definitely going to have a shot at luring them over here. And I've got a ender chest now as well, so we can grab a name tag. Uh, you can also see that it looks pretty cool. Let's have a look at the side of the building over here. Looking alright. I know it's a bit floaty, but when we start putting in some support beams underneath, they're actually going to sort of add a lot to this as well. And man, I love this build, but it probably looks really out of place, doesn't it? But I still think it's a cool build, and then here it is on the other side as well. This is the first time I've actually taken a step back and seen it. I think I've missed some purple blocks around um, the bottom there. And that chap's just happily hiding in the corner. He doesn't want to be seen, does he? <laughs> and uh, the only thing really to do is to tidy up this, because you can see... Oh yeah, that's right, there's going to be some more quartz in this build, actually. Just up the top here as well, just some quartz slabs, which you can't actually see from down here, so I don't know why they are, because as I'm saying, um, this is all going to get sort of filled in, this little bit right here. So I'm just thinking about what it is we need to do. I think it is some upside-down stairs. Do we have any of those? Yep, three, so it would be... Hmm, I think that bit needs filling in. I think it's going to come down like that. Then it's going to go down again to that height. I think that's right. No. No, then it's going to be slabs. Okay, so then it goes... Oh, do I have any slabs? Yes. Then it'll be a slab, um, a quartz slab, and then another one. So if we got someone back here, they wouldn't actually be able to get out. 
Excellent. Okay, and then I'll probably fill this all in so nothing spawns in there as well. So then that'll be that part done. So the inside is almost done. As I said though a moment ago, one of the next things to do is to build a big sign up there. And we're sort of ready now. Oh yeah, and by the way, mobs can actually go through the end rods. They can fit between them, as I found out a moment ago. Uh, but they've sort of got to pathfind their way through, as you can see, sort of in the block and not really sure what to do, are you, buddy? And he can whack me through them as well. <laughs> and now you're taking Fawn's damage. There you go, he went through. Awesome. Looking pretty good, right? Also looks like we've got an unwelcome visitor down below. But this is the final touch now, so we're going to use the camera account to fly around and look at this from all sorts of angles here. It's pretty cool, I like it, it's just such a strange build, and when I said modern, you've got those sort of lines and windows appearing everywhere in the modern style, but it's kind of weird and, and out there as well. So I think it looks real good, and we've still got the bottom to do, but this is the main bit, this is going to be the sign. And so what I'll do is now hop over, hi, <laughs> and uh, check out the wings. Oh, they're so cool. Um, yeah, go over here and just build what we're going to build right here. Now, can you guess what it is? It should be pretty obvious. I've got to remember, actually, when the slab's higher or lower here, I'll probably come back and tweak this a little bit, because I've got a feeling I'm going to end up putting things in the wrong place. Uh, but that would be our first... Oh, wow, that looks so wrong. I've built it up completely wrong, haven't I? Um, yeah, there's not enough room here for what I'm trying to do. So there's two blocks there. How did I manage to get that all wrong? So that would be the top of the letter. Okay. <laughs> now you know what I'm building because I said letter. And that would be the bottom. Yeah. So what I could do here is remove that slab and have it come down a little bit lower. I've got a feeling that's going to look ugly. Yes. That is definitely not how I did this before. So we'll remove those and put that one there. Uh, the next one's going to be nice and easy. We've got the slabs at the top. So we'll put one there and here. Bring two blocks down on either side, and then line at the bottom. You could also make that a full block as well. In fact, let's have a look. What looks better, the slab or the full block? Definitely the slab, in my opinion. Now, the last one involves some stairs. Do I have stairs in my inventory? I do, thank goodness. And also, there's now this little drop over the edge here. Um, so let's come over. The last letter is obviously R. You know what I'm doing now. It's no secret. The cat's out of the bag. <laughs> And, uh, and yeah, there's that bit. So we need to go further across, I think, and maybe up a block to put that there. That's the bottom of the R. And then a full block? No, I don't think that's what I did. Well, let's see. Let's put that there. Oh, no, that's fine. So that says per, right? So we're going to build another word above it. And can you guess what that word is going to be? It's going to be per. <laughs> we're going to have per per written on the side of the wall to make things nice and obvious. Anyway... Let's get this thing finished. There's still a few more bits and bobs to do. Like I said, the underside of the whole thing, the support beams and that. And I'll just finish building these letters. Do you know what? These two at the back just aren't working for me. I don't like it. Uh, the other ones right there are alright, but these just come down way too far. I think what we'll probably do, actually, is put some end rods on the underside, because it looks like that area could do with some light. But yeah, anyway, this is the underside. I love these little pillars here. They've got like the purple rings at the top and I think they look real nice. Okay, there's the purple sign. This thing is finished by the way. Obviously I've got to tidy that up and we've got to stock up the shop as well. But check it out. And I think the base turned out really good. I very much like this building. Gotta say, it was really fun to build. And here it is down on the ground. I've got to say, out of all the buildings, this one does stick out quite a bit. That yellow colour with the purple, man, it really does grab your attention. Anyway, as we approach though, it should be pretty obvious. You come in here, you can see there's a couple of signs down the end here. Assume as per per shop, price one diamond for four stacks. And then, obviously, the queue is to open the chests. But they're currently all empty. So, as I said, we need to go stock this thing up. And I need to sort this out as well. This is just too cool a way of doing things, isn't it? Oh, I love it. And I didn't need to go anywhere near as high as that, did I? Oh, wow. Just fantastic. <laughs> and you've got to control your speed a little bit when you land as well. If you hit the ground too hard, it's bad news. Let's pull up hards and, and drop down like that. There we go. Lovely stuff. And uh, I've got... Hello. <laughs> I've got loads of purple blocks here. But that is actually all I've got as of right now. So the elytra might just be 1.9's best feature. I love that we can just do this 
and gracefully glide over here into our base. It is so very cool, but that is actually all I've got for the purple farm at the moment because the rest of this stuff needs smelting up, right? I came over here, looked in the chest, and I was like, oh, wait a minute, it's all chorus fruit. Of course it is. And I guess that means it's it for me this episode of Hermitcraft. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, and don't forget that tomorrow is the live stream day, so over on twitch.tv there is going to be a lot of Hermitcraft streaming. To find out who's streaming when, just go to hermitcraft.com slash livestream. And anyway, that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you as always, and I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs> Elytra fail. Bye-bye.